Greetings, the internet. This is Ninark, and welcome back. Finally, after a few months of uh, non-existence, I have returned to our dimension in order to fulfill my purpose of informing you guys how to make games in Construct 2. Um, so let's actually just get started right away. This is part 7, I believe, of an unknown amount of tutorial videos, however many it takes to get you guys on your feet game design wise. Anyway, so today we're going to be handling enemies. This is going to be enemies part one. I will do another enemies tutorial on a little bit more advanced enemies, uh, but for now we're just going to do a really simple uh, back and forth Goomba style uh, enemy. So let's do that first off. Right click, insert a new object and go to sprite. Alright, so let's resize this to 16 by 16 and draw a little enemy here. Do, 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 uh, do, 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 all right, so now I have a little enemy, and let's just place him. And I'm not going to press play. You guys know nothing's going to happen when I press play on this character. So let's do things that we need to do in order to get him to function. All right, so he's going to be going to the edge. Once he gets to the edge and realizes that he will fall if he continues going, he's going to turn around and uh, etc. So we need an instance variable. Uh, we're going to call it dir for direction, and we're going to go with one. So uh, the reason we have it as one is if you uh, remember, the grid goes from zero here forward. So if we're moving in a positive direction, so positive one, he's going to be going to the right. And then we're going to change the direction to negative one, and then he will be going to the left. So that's what dir does for us. Uh, we're also going to add a behavior, and we're going to make the behavior platform. Now, we're not actually going to be controlling him using the platform controls. We just want him to function like a platforming character. So let's add that and let's change his max speed to like 30 or something, kind of slow. And then make sure you turn the default controls to no so that we're not actually controlling our demon friend with our main character. And that's pretty much all we need to do from this point. So let's actually jump into the event sheet. Now, uh, actually before we do that, Let's do some uh, cleanup here. And under enemies, we're going to add a new subfolder and we're going to call it real ass enemies because spikes, definitely not enemies, no way. Only movie mans are real enemies because they move and, you know, that's what enemies do. They move. Right. Make a <laughs> sub event and we're going to go to our enemies and we're going to compare instance variable now we're going to our instance variable direction right here if it's equal to one remember which is forward to the right that's what we will want so we're gonna want him to be go to enemies again get down to the platforming part and then we're going to use simulate control and simulate control is basically just telling the guy look it's kinda like you're moving to the right only the main character is not controlling you. So let's do that. We'll click control to the right and you'll see that when we press play our enemy will just move to the right but you'll see he falls off the edge um, which is you know not what we want. Uh, so we want him to turn around as soon as he reaches the edge. So let's right click add a new sub event to this. So this is still underneath dir so it's a, it's a sub event of this sub event. Sub event um, and then we're going to go to enemies and we're going to check uh, is overlapping at offset. Now basically what this does is it sort of projects a version of your character to a, a different spot than it is and checks to see if it's actually uh, standing on something or colliding with something. There's a lot of ways to use it um, but for this one we're going to be checking to see if there is anything below him 16 pixels to the right, which is his width, or sorry, 8 pixels to the right, which is half his width, and then 1 pixel down. You know what, actually it is 16, because it's checking, yeah, sorry, okay. 
So it'll be 16, it'll be, and now I'll, I'll explain this in a second. So 16, positive 16, because we're checking to the right. Offset Y1, because it's checking directly below him. Let's go to our uh, platforms, and we'll do standard platform. I think I called this platform 3, but I have since changed it to be called standard platform. So if you get confused, uh, you know, that's the, the answer. Okay, so it, I'll explain this right here. So our character is getting to here. Once it gets to here, our computer is going to go, okay, if you were all the way over here, is there anything below you? And if there's not, then it's just going to turn him around. Right? Okay, so that'll make sense in a second. So let's see, let's put him right here. Um, and when we do that, we're going to change our enemy set value to dir, and we're going to go make this negative one. Now, it's not going to turn around when uh, dir is at negative one just yet because we need to copy this code and do it for the opposite direction. So click here on the edge, control C, control V, change this to equal to negative one, and then we're going to simulate platform, excuse me, going left, because remember negative one is to the left, and then overlapping at offset negative 16, one, and then we're going to change direction back to one. So this should, if I've done everything right, make our character, our uh, enemy move to the edge, realize that it's at the edge, turn around, etc. So let's try this and see if it worked. And it's not working, of course, because I'm stupid. What I want it to do is this is returning a true. So if overlapping at opposite 16 to 1, that's going to give me a true. So we're gonna we don't want uh, we want it to know when it's not overlapping anything anymore. So what we want to do is uh, click here on this and invert it and invert this one as well. So now it's going to check. Okay, over 16 down one. Is there a thing there? Yeah, there is. Okay, continue. Is there a thing over here? Yeah. Okay, continue, um, etc. So let's try it again. And there we go. It works flawlessly. All right, so I'm cutting in real quick because I did something wrong, and it's unbelievable. I never do anything wrong, um, so this is a first for me. But here we go. Um, so if you'll see, I, I moved this, and there's this 16 pixel uh, grid gap right here in between these two platforms. But if I press play on our enemy, he will just walk right over it because he doesn't give a. Uh, so in order to fix that, uh, there. Uh, there's for some reason some some fault in how fast he's going and how far he moves. So it's never actually checking this spot exactly where it would say, oh no, there's nothing there, turn him around. So we could fix this in a couple ways, but I'm gonna do it this easy way. And the easy way is going to be just making our character thinner than the gap. So let's make him thin. And then the more important part is to actually adjust our collision polygon so we're going to move the X up one here, up one here as well, back one here, back one here. And uh, yeah, so we want to change these. I've already done it, but we want to change this to 14. And then this to negative 15 because it's including the center pixel. Um, I mean, if you this is if you want to get really specific. It works either way, but if you don't want them to go over the edge just one pixel, make a negative 15. And you'll see that now he comes over, he hits this wall, and let's slowly move, try not to attack him in any way, and you'll see that it's pixel perfect that he makes it all the way over. Cool. So now uh, we're going to make him interact with our player. So under here, I'm actually going to make a new subgroup called Movie Man. And I'm going to take these and drop them in here. Oops, not there though. Drop them in here. There we go. Close that. Or, uh, sorry. <laughs> make another subgroup. Trust me, guys. These will make your life so much easier. Uh, moving. And then drop these in there. Close that. And then add a new subgroup from here. And we're going to go do player interaction. Right. So we're going to add a sub here, event here. And it's going to be uh, if our player on collision with another object, our enemy movie man. All right, so we don't want anything to happen directly after its collision. We only want it to do something if it's on top of him, and then we only want to do something if he's just on the left or right. 
Uh, so let's add another sub event to here, add a sub event. And we'll go to our, uh, our player. And then this is going to get a little weird. Compare x. We're going to go to if our x is less than our movie man dot x minus 22. Why minus 22, you ask? I asked the same question. Um, so for some reason, uh, 22, I mean, I know it's subtracting a pixel in between, so uh, it's actually, he is 16 pixels, or 32 pixels tall, but it's only counting the 15 from here down, and then it's only counting the 7 from here up for some reason. I, uh, I can't tell you why, but, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to play around with it. If it's 23, it won't attack, and if it's 24, uh, or sorry, if it's 21, it won't uh, realize what's going on. And if it's 24, then you can also interact with them in different ways. So um, just keep that in mind. It's something you probably have to play around with your sprites. If it's not pixel perfect, it might not matter. So anyway, so if a character is above it, let's add an action. We want to do a couple things. Uh, we'll go to our enemy and let's uh, actually do a little animation for him so you guys learn how to make your game look a little more polished. So let's add a new um, behavior and I don't know why this is a behavior but go down to timer we want a timer now uh, you can't set it over here you actually do it in the event sheet so we'll get back to that in a second um, I also want to take our character and let's duplicate our default animation and call it death and we're gonna give him like a little death frame it's not gonna be an animation but just you know so you can see that he actually dies so the way I'm gonna do that is sh make him really thin then I'm going to make his eyes really thin too. Yeah, cool. That, that's a perfectly fine death uh, frame. So um, yeah, I think that's all we need for there. So what we want to do is uh, add an action, make our enemy, or let's start with our player. Our player, and we want to set a force so he bounces up. So we're going to set a vector y, which is remember a force, upwards, so it's negative, Three, oh, let's make 400, 300 is a little bit lackluster. So now our character bounces. Uh, so, and then we also want to take our enemy and we're going to change his animation. So set animation. And when you type in just a quote here, your animations will come up in a little list. So we want to use death. Let's do that. And then, you know what? I don't even know why I added a timer. I just want to do wait one second and then destroy which is under here under miscellaneous and actually let's add a little bit cooler of a thing we'll take our movie man and we'll set a vector y for him as well to like negative 200 and let's put this right here and one last thing we want to take our enemy and we want to set his uh, set collisions enabled to disabled and we'll put that before the wait one second. So if you read this correctly, when our, char when our character lands on top of him, he will bounce up into the air. Our enemy will turn to death. He will uh, like fly up into the air a little bit. His collisions will be disabled, so now he'll fall through the level. Wait one second, and he'll be destroyed. Let's check that out real quick. So if we run up to our enemy, if I can get on top of him, bounce on top of him, bounce, bounce on top of him. <laughs> this should be this wow how did I mess this up okay so it's compare y and movie man dot y minus 22 all right that was a silly mistake two mistakes in one day unheard of there you go so as you can see if we're on the side of him nothing happens but when, once we jump on top of him it, he bounces up turns a little death animation falls to the ground yeah, so you got to keep uh, keep your eye out for little mistakes like that, uh, changing your Y, confusing them with your X, etc. You know, it's a thing that happens. We're all human here, I hope. Anyway, let's get uh, our enemy to do some damage to us. So we're going to add a new uh, sub-event to here. Make sure you click on this arrow, add a new sub-event. And we're going to go to if player compare x this time 
actually compare to x because we want to know if he's on the left or the right. So if he's on less than our uh, movieman.x, then we want him to do, uh, so this is on his left because it's less than his x. So we're going to make our player, we're going to give him a vector x to negative 200. And then uh, we're going to add a sub event here, just like we did with our spikes. And we're going to make our player uh, check to see is Boolean uh, instance variable set. So if he is not invulnerable, which is what we want. So to invert this, uh, make sure you click, oh, what did I just do? Make sure you click right here, invert it. So if he's not invulnerable, then we want to uh, subtract from our health, value one, and then we want to add an action to our player, and we want to call our function of invul. And remember what invul does over here, somewhere. Uh, it sets invul to true, and then the timer goes, and once the timer is done, then it sets it to false. Excuse me. Right, uh, so yeah, that's all we really need to do there. He gets him, subtracts health, yeah. And then let's also copy this and paste it. And now if he's going to be greater than or equal to. Now we're doing greater than or equal to just on the rare chance that you end up directly in the center of the enemy, which is kind of impossible. Um, but, you know, just in case that could be some sort of weird bug that, you know, we could come back to one day and never be able to figure out what it's from. So greater than or equal to just to be safe. This time he is on the right because he's greater than. So we're going to give him a vector x of 200, which is positive in the front. When if he's not invulnerable, he loses health, etc. Okay, so let's see if I can go for three mistakes in one day. Here we go. Play. So we see our enemy there. If we hit him, he bounces us back. We only lose one health. Uh, since we're invulnerable, if we do it over here, same thing. Now we have zero health, but we can jump on top of him and kill him. Now there's one other problem. Uh, as you can see right there, when I killed him, I still went invul and lost some health. That's because uh, he it's not checking to see if he's greater than this movieman.y minus 22. Now we could write if y equals blah, 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 but there's an easier way to do it. If we add another condition, go to system and make it uh, else, which is somewhere right here under special conditions else. Make sure it's on top of the x. It has to be on top. That's just the rule. So else uh, and else here, and that will just say okay, well, if he's lower than this, then this happens. And you'll see that when we do this now, it doesn't make us invulnerable and lose any health. And if we go to the side, we still lose health. We go to this side, we still lose health. And then if we jump on him, we don't lose health and we kill him. All right, I apologize for making many mistakes in this tutorial video. Um, it's hard getting back into uh, the groove of it. I've been busy working on a bunch of projects and all kinds of crazy stuff, plus the holidays. You know how it is. Anyway, Oh, also, I've been working on a game that I finished. You can check it out. It should be in the uh, description below. You can check out a link up for my itch page. Once I make enough money, I'm going to put it on Steam Greenlight. Um, so we'll see where it goes from there. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Next, we're going to be covering a little bit more advanced of enemies. Um, and yeah, should be fun. All right. Thanks, everyone.